Hello, everyone, and happy Monday. It's 1 o'clock. I'm KNWA and Fox 24 Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff in the Weather Center, and you probably have heard a lot of chatter about a major severe weather event taking place on Tuesday and into Wednesday. I'm just back into the Weather Center after a wonderful weekend, but let me get you caught up on the latest. First of all, temperatures are warm. It's also very humid on this Monday afternoon. Now, the humidity is rather high and will continue to increase, and that is one thing that definitely concerns meteorologists for this weather system moving in is that there will be an abundance of moisture now because of that low level moisture increasing we have quite a bit of cumulus clouds in fact it's basically mostly cloudy across northwest arkansas and so let's look at our severe weather risk this was just recently updated a little bit before one o'clock on this monday afternoon and you definitely notice that red area right along i-35 east and west of oklahoma city all the way to the texas oklahoma border extending north Northward into uh, western sections of uh, Wichita, also continuing north all the way into Nebraska. Northwest Arkansas, however, is in the slight risk category, as you can see. And just to show you a little bit more about what the slight risk means, these categories mean that we will still see the potential for severe weather. Just the coverage won't be quite as much. Now, the farther west you go, storms will be developing well before 10 o'clock, and then by later on in the evening, after dark, those storms will start to push in. So to understand the slight risk and what that means for northwest Arkansas is scattered severe storms are still possible. In fact, uh, there probably will be some severe weather late Tuesday night. However, it looks to be short-lived, not widespread, and uh, isolated intense storm still possible. Now notice the hail could be around one inch, possibly as large as two inches. Now when you start getting farther to the west, you have that moderate and high category, and you notice that that's definitely long-lived, widespread, and intense. And so there's a lot of talk about the severe weather potential, but that's mainly for Oklahoma and Kansas. In fact, I think Kansas is really under the gun. If we were living in Wichita right now, I would be extremely concerned. So as we look at our severe weather ingredients, you know, what are the four things, what are the four necessary ingredients for severe weather? Well, first of all, it's deep low-level moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. Check. We've already got that in place. It will continue to increase, and I'll show you more on that. Instability. This weather system that's moving in tomorrow evening is going to have the greatest amount of instability so far this year. And uh, really, a lot of the storm systems that have moved in, we've been lacking that low-level instability. And so instability is basically the storm's fuel. Check, we've got that. We've got the cold air that will be above very warm, humid air at the surface. Next, we have a source of lift. Yes, we've got a dry line to the west, along with a very strong low-pressure system that will be moving in. And finally, strong low-level winds, especially Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning. There will be strong winds for those storms to rotate. Now, as we look at the moisture, look at how uh, humid it is down to the south. Dew points in the upper 60s. We still have a full day for this southerly wind to pump into the moisture into the uh, western Oklahoma area as well as central Oklahoma and even northwest Arkansas. Now look at this by Tuesday evening. Our dew points are going to be in the upper 60s into the lower 70s. So that means extremely muggy and humid air. Now by Wednesday morning that uh, cold front starts to push in and starts to dry us out. But we still have a risk of severe weather Wednesday morning into the afternoon as well. So our satellite and radar are currently showing no thunderstorm activity over Oklahoma. And what's the reason for this? Well, it's all about the cap. And you might have heard about the cap or the lid preventing thunderstorm development. So here's what the cap is. Essentially, you have very warm air that is flowing off Colorado and New Mexico as the sun heats the high terrain. That's about 5,000 to 8,000 feet above the ground. Then you get these southwesterly winds aloft at that level that blows that warm air into the high terrain into the plains, also into northwest Arkansas and the river valley. Now, as this cap is a very warm layer of air that prevents thunderstorm development. Now, that's going to move over Oklahoma as well as Kansas throughout the day. Then you got the humidity that's pumping in south of that and a little bit uh, below that warm layer of air. So the warm air aloft, is which is the cap, prevents thunderstorms from forming. Now, as we head farther east, if the surface air gets warm enough, which we're expecting tomorrow, lots of daytime heating in Oklahoma, 
and that cap will weaken enough, thunderstorms will erupt by the afternoon and into the evening along the dry line. And I'll show you a little more about that. So here's this weather system. It's an intense, strong system that is moving in from the desert southwest and the Four Corners region. And it's going to become what's called a negatively tilted trough, meaning this energy is going to swing out like literally a uh, fast sp uh, pitch softball, uh, uh, you know, a, a women's softball. When they underhand pitch and they fling that system in, that's exactly what's going to happen with this system on Tuesday. So notice no thunderstorms today. Tomorrow, we got the dry line setting up to the west. And there you see by about 4 or 5 o'clock, thunderstorms erupting. Now, the future track, I think, is personally a little too fast on this, but it does bear watching. By 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the evening, these storms race to the east. Now, the future track does have a bias on coming in too quick, but I think after 10 o'clock is a good bet to severe uh, to see the potential for severe storms. So what are we talking about as far as the risk in northwest Arkansas and the river valley? Well, the flooding threat will be very low because these storms are going to race east. Now, later on in the week, on Friday into Saturday, we've got another chance of rain. Some of that rain could be heavy, and that risk of flooding will go up. Damaging winds, I think, will be our greatest threat as these storms line out. Will we see hail with it? Yes, but not as big as the hail that happens in Oklahoma from these isolated supercells. And then finally, that tornado risk is conditional. We can get what's called QLCS tornadoes, which stands for Quasi-Linear Convective System. And those are the storms that are very tough to determine exactly where it's rotating. And before you know it, there's a quick spin-up that develops that ends up producing damage. So regardless, we do have the potential for severe weather Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. We're going to get you geared up for that. We're going to teach you all about ways that you can stay ahead of the storms. But there will be a lot of talk about major tornado outbreak. And for Kansas, yes, that's true. But for northwest Arkansas and the River Valley, yeah, we do have the potential for tornadoes. But the risk is not as great. Uh, compared to what's happening out to the west. I'll give you more updates throughout the day, also throughout the day tomorrow, so keep it here with your weather authority for the latest weather information.